Wait, have I been muted this entire time? Why didn't you guys point it out? Why didn't you guys say anything? I mean, you guys did say th that, but I thought it was trolling. Why do you guys troll me so much that I just assume everything- God fucking damn it! I've literally- I've been talking for like 20 minutes! Oh, God, okay. So, here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna pretend this never happened. When I go in to play the next game, I'm gonna pretend it's my first time playing the labs, okay? We're gonna do- we're gonna do a cover-up, okay? Like they- like they do in the movies. We're gonna pretend it's my first time playing labs in the next game, and everyone's gonna act surprised, okay? Everyone's gonna act surprised. Yo, what's up, guys? So, this is gonna be a very interesting day this time around. As you can see, I put on a little poundage, you know. That's okay. I actually, I think I might have an eating disorder. That's, that's what they tell me. Uh, I just can't stop. Anyway, so, today we're gonna be trying out this labs. It's a very interesting concept called Quick Draw. In Quick Draw, the rules are simple. You're gonna draw a full hand every turn of fleeting cards, and they're all gonna cost a random amount of mana. So you're gonna have to use them or lose them, you know? Is 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 what they say. She who wanders, interesting. So, whew, man, this is actually such an interesting format. Mana, uh, I, I will say one of the biggest things about this is mana value. You really need to go for cheap cards. Cheap cards are super essential. I think- I think we'll save the one mana deny. He's probably gonna warm others on turn one or something and we'll deny it. I think so. You're muted again. <laughs> I fucking hate you guys. Okay, that's fine. He just played a- he just played a three mana deal too. No problems here. So... This one's- this one's gonna be quite interesting. We didn't really roll anything good. We're just gonna have to play our Swift and Glinter, I guess. Is War Mothers even good if it costs one? Probably not. And unfortunately, we just don't have ways of punishing this one health stat line. We have to take this exchange. Maybe we'll get like a zero mana elite. Yeah, this is good enough. It curves out. For Demacia, yeah, it's gonna be fleeting. So anything that generates a card, even if it's not a draw, anything that generates any card, it will be randomized and it will be fleeting. So, it's a little... God, the prolong actually adds a lot of skill element to this. You can, you can prolong so many different things. And I think you get a new prolong every three turns. So if you don't use your prolong, you're still good. I think... Wow. God, the decision points of this are actually kind of crazy. This is surprisingly skill-based. I think the best thing for me to do... I think I might just kill the Karina. Karina costs three. I could will it as well, and he can't replay it. I'll will it here. This mode is really fun, much better than the last lab. Yeah, I think this will last longer than the last lab too. Last lab was really, really fun for like two or three hours, until it gets like super solved. This one I feel like we could play for a while. I want to point out something really important about like skill ratioing, and I was actually talking about this with my boy Cephalopod. We were talking about like game design principles and something that's really really important to note is that a lot of people have this misconception that high RNG means it can't possibly be high skill. Um, but if it's designed in such a way that there's like a lot of like key decision points that have to scale off of the RNG, then it can still be simultaneously really high RNG and high skill. A good example would be something like poker. And like this mode, I know it seems like low skill because it's like teehee everything's RNG, but there's actual like... There's a lot of big decision points in a pretty long game that forces like a very counterintuitive mode of thinking. I think that there is actually a lot of skill involved here. And like stuff like banking mana is really important as well. I think that this is this is much more skill testing than it probably seems. Okay, Razor Scale Hunter is absolutely sick here. Absolutely sick. I think I'll slow play it though. Let's open with Powder Keg. Because Powder Keg could actually curve into Withering Whale. We might want to go Whale instead of Fury of the North. So just keep that in mind. That like... If, if you're the kind of player that likes getting challenged... You really should try to avoid the mentality of avoiding something... Just because it's like, you know... High RNG. Things can still be very, very challenging. In fact, high RNG makes them more challenging. 
And I didn't really like think about it in that way until I like started playing poker. Okay, so now we've got a couple of lines here. <clears throat> we can like try to clear the board with fury, or we can just like do a big whale, and we can keep the fury for later as well. I think at this point, I will just try to do a whale and see what happens. I will prolong this fury. Absolutely, I'll prolong this fury. If you didn't want to prolong deny, why not use it last round? Because Spellman is really, 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 really valuable. This is, so I, I I will say one one thing in this mode. One thing in this mode is the the value of mana is gonna go insanely underrated. You should almost never. You should actually almost never be like thinking about playing three mana cards. You should almost always be thinking about banking spell mana. Mana is really, 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 really important. Like. Do, like be th this mode challenges like insane levels of mana efficiency because in card games you have two resources that you're trying to leverage at equivalent rates so that one doesn't throttle another those resources are cards and mana and because you draw so many cards and because you have so little mana to spend those cards mana becomes the most premium resource ever like we're drawing five cards a turn and we're getting three mana a turn some of these cards are costing one i'd rather play like three one cost cards than one like three cost card almost always even if the 1-3 cost card is like a Ledros, it doesn't matter. Right? Ledros will just get blocked and you'll lose reactivity. So keep that in mind. The most important thing is be insanely mana efficient. Like, to a ridiculous degree. Like, I think it's, it's probably proper to bank mana in crazy absurd ways that... That, yeah, that really seem ridiculous at first. Um, I mean, we can prankster... I think it's likely that we'll just trade into that with Death's Hand. Uh, so if we're using Death's Hand, if we're using Prankster, we're obviously using Plaza Guardian. Neither of these twos is worth using, so we can play the Prankster early and we can bank the one mana here. You sound very knowledgeable for your first game. Yeah, that's like applied principles from like just card games in general. Because that's the, that's the most important skill, being able to like take concepts from games and transfer them into other games. So we're going to have to let this Plaza Guardian hit us. Our Fury is going to be, I think, really valuable on the Razor Scale Hunter. So I think we'll just do it like this. And now, we might not need to bank mana if we just want to go in for lethal. Unfortunately, all these options kind of suck, right? It's like dealing two to Plaza Guardian isn't really doing anything. The Battering Ram isn't really doing anything. And I think this game is ending next turn. So I'm going to do something that looks really weird. Like, really weird. I'm going to prolong the Death's Hand, and then I think I'm just going to pass. <clears throat> so this looks like a bizarre play for a few reasons. Because, I mean, A, we could Death's Hand right now, right? And B, you know, we, we're banking this mana... We're, we're like, we're sending the mana away and not necessarily using these. I don't think I want to Kempunk. Depending on... I could Kempunk here. It's not necessarily the worst thing ever. I think I don't want to Kempunk. And this is like, this is sort of the key with this mode. I think this is correct to do it like this. Haha, <laughs> Flame Chompers. That's so funny, you get it for free. Okay, Warm of this Call might change things. We could potentially be in a slow play all of a sudden. So we might want to open the door for Rasa. I think the big thing is Razor Scale and Rasa want to come down together. So I think Razor Scale just wants to take an open attack, which should lead into a power Rasa. So let's do it like this. I just want to try to like end this game now. So you'll notice by committing it like this, we end up with a good Rasa on our next action. We're overkilling the Plaza Guardian in case he has something that can protect it. And we're also keeping enough mana up for Fury of the North. So look at how this game has played out. This is the, the second game we've played of Labs. Look at how this is... Oh, wait. No, uh, uh, sorry. I misspoke. This is the first game we've played of Labs. Um, look at how this situation has played out. Like, the fact that we had the Prolong to give ourselves the extra option, and the fact that we were banking the mana, was both really, really, really important. Okay, we lost. Oh, this guy's just too good. God, you might actually have to War Mothers here. That's so sad, dude. How good is War Mothers? It's really bad, right? It's really bad. It's so slow, dude. We're actually gonna, like, lose the game if we War Mothers. Yes. 
It's like, it's really, really, really risky to do. So a veteran investigator could actually give us an option, and at post Rasa, that option is valuable. The problem with War Mothers is just, it's a high risk play. I know it looks good, but it's a high risk play in a situation we want to be playing for low variance. Like, the, the key to this mode is to play like as low variance as possible. So we can take a swing in here. He's tapped out. I don't think he's used prolong. God, there's there's actually so much skill in this mode. There's a there's a ton of skill in this mode. It's actually it's really crazy. I love this. Cause yeah, the thing is if we warm up this there, we actually lose to so many hands and so many games just immediately. So it seems like the best thing to do is to just take very passive lines here and take the pass. The one downside is like Swiftwing can go for Prankster, which is maybe not good. This is a really fucking cool mode. I love this. There's no risk. There's no high risk in two free minions by next turn lull. So he's got a board that's like four wide. We've got a board that's effective zero at 10 health. And we're generating randomness on every single action point. Like a really high degree of randomness. The two minions we get are completely random. So this is like the highest risk concept like imaginable. Yeah, I guess we're just matroning into Fiora, honestly. That's an okay play. Like... You want to play the thing that swings three things, right? When you play Rasa, you are swinging three units. And the body you're getting is good, right? Whereas War Mothers takes two turns to swing three units. And tempo is kind of the most important thing here. The thing that makes cards like War Mothers bad in Runeterra is that you only attack every other turn. Which means, like... The identity of things that are too slow like that, like games end so fast in Runeterra, right? Really, 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 really fast. I mean, we can go ahead and do this. I think keeping keeping Prankster alive could actually be one of the higher value plays. And of course, we've got Fury, which is extremely well positioned to do that. The one problem is Fury is non-fleeting, so it's possible I was supposed to use Spirit's Refuge there and just keep the non-fleeting card. Like, there's, there's actually so many decision points in this mode that are not easy. Because now we're probably... Uh, another tip is use Prolong aggressively. I can, I can guarantee you that. I didn't mention that, but you'll remember like three turns ago we used Prolong really aggressively. Just because the game can end at any turn, and you don't want to end the game with a Prolong in your hand. You just want to keep your options as high as possible. Okay, so he gets a pretty good concerted strike there. I guess, I mean, is Prolonging Fiora our best play here? I don't know, Prolonging Spirit's Refuge is probably better. Spirit's Refuge is probably... In, in this mode, the idea of stuff like Barrier and stuff like Lifesteal is really, really powerful. So yeah, it's, it's just a little too good to avoid. So basically, the, the identity with this mode is you just want to play... You want to engineer long games, long safe games where you have maximum uh, opportunities to out, outskill. Right? If that makes sense? That's kind of like the the entire uh, the entire concept here. So Cloud Drinker is actually surprisingly good in this mode, which is really funny. If we play Phantom Prankster, that means we can't play Riptide. Riptide as a stun is actually not accomplishing as much. We actually do want the ability to close out games. So Cloud Drinker will allow us to curve Sap Magic and Spirit's Refuge here. Yeah, this is fine. He needs to have like the 5 over the top for this to actually really punish me. Which is, I mean, if he got lucky... Could happen, but it's a little hard. All of his big cards have fearsomes, which means taking attacks with these one ones is actually probably worth doing here. War Mothers would win the game by now, yeah, or lose it, and that's exactly right. Like, even if your play, even if you have a button that says. I win the game two-thirds of the time, and I lose the game one-third of the time. That doesn't mean that's a smart button to play, right? It can be. And it definitely often is. But it's very much not always. So we can go ahead and take a pretty wide attack here, I think. Since we're on, like, the single trick hands. Um, I don't know, this is... this atta uh, Attacking in this kind of position is maybe a little too throwy. Probably just, like, solo attack with Rasa with Spirit's Refuge is a bit better. I don't know, these one ones aren't really doing a ton. Sixty-six percent is higher than my usual win rate. Sixty-six percent is nuts. No, no, okay, so guys, what what I'm saying, if if you were at the start of the game, 
if you were at the very start of any given game, you would always take a button that says, give me 66% equity. Always. Like, even if you're a good player, you would take that button. But I'm not talking about, like, the early position in a game. I'm talking about, like, when you have the decision point, like, later on in the game, and your equity is easily often higher than 66%, right? Then you don't take that button. You don't, you don't sell out for 66%. You invest. So let's see, let's see what we're what we're doing about this. He's got basically a pretty big board on the side. We can try Karina and see how that works. We've got Might to basically keep one thing alive. And it looks like keeping the Cloud Drinker alive is our best opportunity. We also have Deep Meditation, which I guess I should open with. I mean, Decisive Maneuver is a very hilarious counter to this. It doesn't really tap us out of too much. And we do have the ability to stun something for value. We can chain guillotines. I think the best play might be prolonging guillotine. We'll see how that works, though. So we want to stun the regeneration one, given that. This is a really, really high skill format. I promise. Like, if I were to... And I, I'm not saying I could necessarily do this. I think I, I think I could do pretty well today. But I promise, like, if you were to play today, and if you played, like, perfectly, you would have a higher win rate than you'd probably have on, like, ladder. Like, that's pretty crazy. Might to Prankster as well. Yeah, Might to Prankster as well. That was definitely a misplay. You guys are right about that. Um, Create a fleeting guillotine. So it creates a new guillotine, which means it's going to be another random cost. That's really interesting. I don't know if that's actually worth going for. It really might not be. There's nothing else that could be worth prolonging here, though. Cost isn't random. It's one mana again. So why is it one again? Because it... Is there is there a rule what makes it one again? Three costs always cost one. Oh, are the costs not randomized? Maybe I should read the rules. It's always divided by three. Okay, okay. That makes sense. That makes a lot more sense. I like it like that. That's a lot better than what I thought it was. Jesus. Yeah, so we could we could be looking at like aggressive paths to try to end the game. That could work. Yeah, prolonging guillotine is has to be a misplay though. That's just kinda like a trolley play. There's like there's not really a good reason for that. I've definitely I've, I've misplayed this game pretty badly. What are we doing here? Ledros is quite interesting. I wanna just like take down Ledros. Let's try this and see what happens. Yeah, prolong Prolonging guillotine, not saving prankster. This this turn this turn we trolled hardcore. Like super super hardcore trolling. So he's prolonging the Ledros. Interesting. I happen to be okay with that. We're banking one. God. We're 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 gonna have to need to like okay. This this this, this changes a lot of things. This changes a lot of things. The fact that the mana works that way. Fresh offering, Scuttle Guys. And Scuttle Guys does get discounted in deck. So it'll kind of always cost zero, right? So it's kind of always nuts. Interesting. So we have the sick combo, make it rain plus guillotine. If only guillotine was burst and Cloud Drinker worked off of it, that would be like the mega sick combo. This is a ballsy pass. It's a little too ballsy. I'm fine losing this game though. Because like we, we made some like crazy misplays. This is so interesting. I fucking love this mode. It's a troll pass. Yeah, I don't mind taking like some trolley lines. I think it's a it's very interesting just to see how it all works out, right? And it, it looks like Mill is still a condition on the table here. Swain flip, huh? That's quite interesting. Yeah, I mean she who wanders is never good here. Flippable Swain position. Do, 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 do. Yeah, sure. Okay. So this one doesn't count. It's our first our first game of the day. You know, so obviously we're going to be making some misplays. I'm only taking 6 damage here, right? So this one's pretty easy. Uh We're always chumping out the 10, so it looks a little something like this. Karma one matters the least. 
Okay, this one seems good. Tortured Prodigy's Omega Nuts. Yeah, Tortured Prodigy. Wow, is that like the craziest card in this mode? Holy shit. Yeah, Tortured Prodigy would be absolutely insane in this mode. That would be... Wow, that would be crazy. That's pretty funny. So, taking taking the stall condition is a, a real way to win these games as well, which is kind of sweet. This guy's killing off our units. I mean, that's never going to matter, right? How does he... How does he win here? So when it... When it divides by three, it doesn't matter for, like, the evaluation of play, but when it divides by three, does it round up or down? Wolf Riders, Omega Nuts. Oh, shit! You can get more max mana in this mode, huh? Oh, that's so cool, dude. Man, I love this mode. You guys said Mogwai is sick of it already? Is he actually? I love this mode, dude. I don't know. That being said, I did say that about the last one. And I did get sick of it after, like, two and a half hours. There's so much skill expression here. This is like... I promise that this is crazy. So he just loses to his own mill, right? He should he should just lose the game here. Unless there's a special rule that says, like, reshuffle your deck. Oh, okay. Apparently there was a special rule that says reshuffle your own... Oh, no, we're good. Yeah, yeah, we win. He's still playing it, but he's mad about RNG. I think I... I used to not really like RNG before I played poker. I don't know. It's, it's, it's sort of like I was talking about. Like, RNG is... As long as there's plenty of, like, super impactful decision, RNG ends up being, like, very, very mitigated. Right? Like, there's insane levels of decision making in this game. There's insane levels of decision making in this game. Every lab mode is gonna be fun for a while and then it gets old. Oh yeah, of course. No, no, no absolutely. That's 100% true. The only question is like how long they last. Last one lasted like two and a half hours for me, which honestly is not bad. This one I feel like is gonna last longer. In this mode, if like both players are playing well, health has a, a really, really hard time mattering. Like, the first like five or so points of health are completely free. Um, It is a very board centric mode, like extremely board centric. So it ends up working sort of like Demacia Mirrors where the value of health is kind of at the lowest it could ever possibly be. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Poison puff caps are actually kind of good here. I think I'll just full keep this hand. Holy shit. It's only like, but the... This is kind of a crazy hand, right? Because my, uh... Whatever I draw, I can prolong it. And then the Plaza Guardian's guaranteed free. This is a crazy hand. What the hell? Like, even if we don't get to play our last spell. Wait, isn't this guy dead? Hang on, you look dead, buddy. Bro? Are you good? I think you're dead. <laughs> Jesus. Ah, oh, he's got double trouble. He's alive. Oh, well. So how aggro is aggro here? We might actually have to just like go in for the full health amount. I think we we have to play this like pretty aggressively, guys. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely real here. He's got a three card hand with two spell mana up. Man, there is actually a chance we might need to use double trouble reactively. Three damage. We're playing for like maximum damage. I think the best thing to do is to just use prolong. And just waste it. Just use it to trigger puff caps and allow us to use twin disciplines reactively. I don't know. Are we, are we assuming he's on an option? He has to block at least. He always has to block at least. Yeah, this has to be best. It's just the safest play. Because the, the thing is, Prolong is actually going to do very, very little in this game. And if he has a way to actually threaten like some amount of health, we need to use twin disciplines defensively. It's actually very easy for him to have that here. Okay. So keeping Twin Disciplines for plus health is just straight up winning us the game here. So one of the important things is like to not be baited by value and stuff like that. Like if, if you imagine that Prolong, like what is that Prolong actually doing if we just try to greet it into our hand? Really nothing. His hand range is actually full of cheap spells. Um, so we really want to make sure we have the ability to play around that. 
We do need to play aggro. Like, our win condition is actually the mushrooms on this peddler. Um, so we need to make sure we're, like, playing aggressively. And the prolong is actually insanely low value there. It's kind of crazy. Sap's sort of good here? Yeah, Sap could be good here. Depends what he plays. It's usually... Your unit's... Your unit's health doesn't really matter in this mode. Because uh, there's a lot... There's not usually a ton of, like, big things. Most things are, like, small. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and block this with uh, Absorb Soul. Why not? Most things have, like, really small amounts of health. And... Or, sorry, sorry. Uh, there's not a lot of small units, and there's not a lot of, like, damage-based removal. So, like... Sap Magic could kick in here, but reasonably speaking, it's it's usually not doing a ton. But yeah, I think we just win this. Like, he should just literally start dying to the puff caps. So we'll we'll just like slow play the ghost. There's a chance like saving the sap magic can bait something out later. So doing a burst pass is like a nice non-committal play here. Remembrance could be zero mana, but I think it's actually like the only way Remembrance is zero mana is if something's getting targeted and getting killed. And if something, if he tries to like kill something or target something, I'd rather instead of discounting the mana, I'd rather save its life. So we're gonna play Remembrance before the sad magic because of that. <laughs> okay, dude, that's gonna work for me, man. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's a that's a great cast salesman for me, buddy. <laughs> Okay, so now we just kind of chill until the puff caps kill him. Perfect. Yeah, Peddler is actually super sick in this mode. It's kind of crazy. So he's drawing five cards here. He's probably dead in two turns. Furon is not a good draw, but it's funny. There's kind of no... There's there's almost no such thing as a good draw in a hand like this. I mean, I guess I'll Furon and bank a Decimate. We open attacking. How much mana are the decimates from Fraun? They're two mana, so they're usually pretty bad. Fraun is like a really weak card in this mode. You you really want to play... The, the biggest bait in this card, the biggest way you're going to have an edge over other players, is everyone's going to get baited by these expensive cards that they can play on turn one, like Ledros and Dreadway and stuff like that. And e even this guy played like Bright Steel Protector. The way you win this mode is by playing a bunch of cheap cards, not like one really big one. And you want that to be reflected in your mulligans as well, is the most important thing. Now this guy, I can't really call him out, because his hand... I mean, he had a bunch of cheap spells. Or sorry, not Bryce of Protector, Bryce of Formation. He had a bunch of cheap spells, but he might have kept it in the mulligan, and I think that's honestly probably a misplay if he did. You really just want to, like, play a bunch of medium-sized things. Not small things, not small things, but, like, medium-sized things. You want to play, like, you know, high-value, like, one-mana and two-mana things. And, like, in general, you know, sometimes you'll play big three-mana units, but it's often kind of baity.